write down the heading spontaneous and non spontaneous process correct so what is a spontaneous process a spontaneous process is the process which happens on its own right we can say on its own or after a proper initiation okay so in this you write down a spontaneous process see first of all you understand what is a spontaneous process i'll give you the definition also of it the spontaneous process are those process which happens on its own or after a proper initiation for example i have this pen in my hand right when i leave this pen it will go down right it will fall down it is an spontaneous process right water flows down the hill a spontaneous process rusting of iron a spontaneous process diffusion of gas from high pressure to low pressure a spontaneous process right flow of current from high potential to low potential a spontaneous process right so these are the processes which happens on its own right now when you talk about uh, the burning of fuel fuel right it just need an initiation you have to spark it once you spark it it is done it will burn on its own it does not require a continuous support correct that is also an spontaneous process are you getting it so spontaneous process are all those process which happens on its own or after a proper initiation means continuous support is not required you just you know help the process to start with once it starts it goes on its own it does not require your or any external continuous support okay examples i have given you i'll just dictate the definition also i'll write down now you see one thing this is the candle suppose we have it's burning right now if i cover this with a vessel completely cover what happens after some time we have this candle it's burning and when 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 we cover this up properly what happens after some time yes yes the flame is extinguished right yes the candle goes off correct why it is happening why it is happening because it requires for the burning of candle it requires the continuous supply of oxygen yes once you covered it up properly then the supply of oxygen is not there you cut off the supply of oxygen so whatever oxygen was present inside it it will get burned once it's over the flame goes off right the fire extinct you know the candle the or the flame extinguished right so why it happens because the burning of candle or the flame it requires a continuous support of oxygen correct and that is why you know this process is non spontaneous process because it does not happen on its own or after an initiation it requires continuous support of what support of a uh, any external support you can say right one very good example of this also you can consider for the understanding of the two processes spontaneous and non spontaneous you must have heard boiling and evaporation right so tell me i think you have a fair bit of understanding what is spontaneous what is non spontaneous boiling and evaporation which one is spontaneous which one is non spontaneous or both is spontaneous both non spontaneous tell me
so evaporation is spontaneous evaporation is just a second guys yeah so yeah so boiling is non spontaneous because boiling boiling happens at a fixed temperature like for water it is 100 degrees celsius but is spontaneous happens at normal temperature right at room temperature correct so you need to heat water and its vapor pressure when equals to atmospheric pressure whatever the temperature it is that temperature is called the boiling point of that particular liquid right so boiling water requires continuous support of heat but evaporation requires nothing correct so evaporation is spontaneous boiling is non spontaneous ha to you cannot remove sun gayatri right it's something like you're talking about if i say this pen if i leave right it will go down correct it will go down and then you will say sir if i remove gravitation then what happens the process won't be spontaneous then so there is something which is there which is and everything is based on these uh, you know universal facts okay so you cannot remove the rem universal fact itself yes guys i understood correct so there are something that you need to take as it is so so all the theory based upon you know all these facts that we had already ha uh, evaporation is spontaneous prakul yeah, that's right evaporation is spontaneous no doubt correct so i hope you understood the you know def the difference between the two processes right let us write down the definition quickly for this write down a spontaneous process a process which has which has a natural tendency natural tendency to occur either by its own either by its own or after or after a proper initiation so initiation you know what's be required here may be required proper initiation right under a given set of condition set of condition examples write down flow of water down the hill flow of current from high potential to low potential high potential to low potential diffusion of gas from high pressure to low pressure okay 
diffusion of gas from high pressure to low pressure uh burning of fuel burning of fuel it requires external support okay uh rusting of iron all these are spontaneous process yes nuclear fusion reaction also you can consider spontaneous once it starts it will go on yeah that's right you should correct so all these are examples we have correct of spontaneous process non spontaneous process we write down write down this is the process this is the process which neither occurs this is the process see prakul uh, you are applying some condition here right like humidity and all but how do we define evaporation evaporation is just a process by which liquid converts into its vapor form on its own right at room temperature so we are talking about that process correct now if you are talking about high humidity less humidity or suppose you know uh, in the atmosphere if you keep the a glass of water in vacuum then obviously there it will be difficult so condition we are not applying we are just uh, you know trying to understand the term evaporation what is the definition we have and that process is spontaneous or not that is what we are talking about if you apply some condition if there is some you know unexpected condition there then it then that's a different case but as far as evaporation is concerned the definition of evaporation is what it is a process of conversion of liquid into its vapor form at normal temperature right so that process is a spontaneous we are talking about okay so right now non spontaneous process a process which neither occur neither occur on its own a process which neither occurs on its own not by initiation neither occurs on its own nor by initiation is called non spontaneous process okay example write down flow of heat from flow of heat from cold to hot body flow of heat from cold to hot body diffusion of gas from low pressure to high pressure diffusion of gas from low pressure to high pressure so obviously these things are not possible on its own right 
but it does not mean the process is not possible at all correct the process is possible we can do some external work in order to you know have these kind of processes like we can uh, you know push gas from low pressure area to high pressure area by applying pressure right that is a process what we call it as have you heard reverse osmosis or osmosis so osmosis and reverse osmosis process are two different types of process two different way to move right opposite to each other right so both are possible both are happening osmosis is also possible a reverse osmosis is also possible right so it's it does not like you know that that non spontaneous is not possible at all it is possible but it requires continuous external support candle wala example you see candle wala example if you continue you know providing oxygen it will burn right it it will never extinguish once it gets over its a different thing thing but it will uh, you know the flame will continue right so that's how the thing is non spontaneous process does not mean that process is not possible if the continuous support is there the process is possible there okay that's what you must keep in mind okay now these are the two processes here now why we are discussing this process here and what is the use of this correct so for your board exam and all sometimes in competitive exam also they will give you the four different options like which of this statement is correct or wrong for spontaneous process or non spontaneous process so you, you must have the understanding of the true process then you can answer these kind of questions correct in a school exam they ask sometimes you know what is the difference between spontaneous and non spontaneous process right so all these points can help you now why this process is happening okay whether it is it is spontaneous and non spontaneous process why this process is happening correct what is the driving force for this kind of process right there must be something which you know which which is driving this process to take place what is the actual reason actual factor for this kind of processes like for example you see if you talk about some process which is exothermic in nature right the process which is exothermic in nature like i'll give you some examples you see here suppose i'll write down this reaction okay listen to me carefully here h2 gas plus half of o2 gas hydrogen oxygen combines forms h2o liquid this delta h is negative delta s is negative means the process is exothermic is exothermic spontaneous also i am giving the example of spontaneous process spontaneous if i take this example carbon solid and o2 gas converts into co2 gas delta h is again less than 0 right this one is also exothermic and the process is spontaneous so a spontaneous process means what exothermic process means what that the energy is decreasing right because some amount of energy is releasing so over, overall the energy of the system decreases right so what we can say in exothermic process the entire system is going uh, going towards the lesser energy state which we can say it is more stable isn't it can we say that since the process is exothermic right exothermic process hence we can say energy releases in this process 
and the entire system is going towards the lesser energy state isn't it right and since it is going towards the lesser energy state which is more stable state hence we can say the process is spontaneous it is going towards more stability right okay so exothermic process so we can understand that the energy is decreasing and hence the stability is increasing that's why it is a natural process so till here the thing was fine because logically we can correlate things that stability is increasing hence it is spontaneous so after that the problem is there are some endothermic process also which are spontaneous in nature like for example you see uh um, this one i'll go to the next slide just a second you need to write down all these examples okay there are some some endothermic process endothermic processes which are which are spontaneous which are spontaneous for example you see you if you take ice from the freezer after some time what happens it melts and converts into liquid is it a spontaneous process is it a spontaneous conversion of ice into liquid yes it is a spontaneous it is taking heat from the surroundings and converting into ice happens on its own so it is the endothermic process but what but spontaneous similarly we'll take the example of evaporation we've discussed it it is also it is also spontaneous right one more re reaction you see cso3 calcium carbonate solid it is and when you heat this it converts into cao solid plus co2 gas correct so all these processes are spontaneous process so now the problem is when we were talking about exothermic process that is understandable because the energy is overall decreasing and stability is increasing here the thing is exactly opposite right it is consuming energy and the energy of the system is increasing so logically it should be less stable and the process should not be spontaneous but this is a spontaneous process correct so the See, freezing requires low temperature, right? Yes, Gayatri. So, if that temperature is not that low, it is not an it. It won't the you know the liquid or whatever it is, it won't get freeze, right? So, you need to have that condition continuously, right? so if you talk in terms of spontaneity and non spontaneity the process won't be in spontaneous over there 
because we are considering for a spontaneous process we are considering normal condition at normal condition basically not at extremely low temperature or extremely high temperature because minus you know below 0 degrees celsius the temperature is not normally it's not there and right? we need to have that arrangement to achieve those kind of tem those temperatures right yes normal condition we have stp you can consider to some extent ntp you can consider normal conditions basically under normal conditions okay yes so here the point i am trying to uh, make you understand is exothermic is fine we are clearly we were getting it why it is spontaneous but why endothermic processes are spontaneous that we did not understand but since it is a spontaneous process and this information i am giving you so obviously you can understand this that you know delta h which is obviously less than 0 for exothermic process delta h is not the only criteria for spontaneity of any process can we say that yes tell me guys right if delta h is the only criteria then this these processes should not be a spontaneous process but since it is so obviously delta h is not the only criteria we have we have some other criteria also for spontaneity right and that criteria is what is randomness have you heard this term apart from enthalpy randomness is the another criteria we have randomness is the another criteria we have this means what the process always goes in that direction where the randomness is increasing randomness or disorderness both are same thing actually right so everything is you know it is it is moving randomly in on di all direction there is no fixed pattern nothing is there that we call it as randomness or disorderness okay write down this point here any process has natural tendency to go towards maximum randomness to go towards maximum randomness okay oh just a second properly correct that is the natural tendency we have that process will move towards more randomness now how do we measure randomness of any such system to measure randomness we we have given a new thermodynamic term that is entropy okay so listen to me first of all very clear uh, very carefully here we have two criteria of spontaneity what are those criteria what are those criteria tell me of spontaneity yes that is enthalpy delta h and randomness these are the two criteria we have for rand for spontaneity how do we measure randomness to measure randomness a new thermodynamic term is given which we call it as entropy represented by s so entropy is the thermodynamic quantity which measures randomness of any system write down it is a thermodynamic state quantity write down it is a thermodynamic
thermodynamic state quantity which measures measures randomness and randomness or disorder randomness or disorderness randomness or disorderness of the molecules of the system molecules of the system right next line it is an extensive property and state function state quantity you have written already right now it is an extensive property since it is state quantity so change in entropy s is delta s equals to s final minus s initial this is a change in entropy unit of entropy is is calorie per kelvin or joule per kelvin the unit of entropy entropy also we say that it is the number of possible ways by which the energy is distributed within the system or uh, once again i said it is the number of possible ways by which the energy is distributed in the system right so if you talk about the entropy of gas because gaseous particles will have maximize or maximum random motion so entropy of gas is more than to that of liquid and entropy of liquid can move easily is more than to that of gas to the gas sorry gas liquid and solid here this is the order of entropy we have for solid liquid and gas okay the mathematical definition of entropy you write down mathematically it is defined as it is defined as as the integral of of all integral of all terms involved in involved in terms involved in um reversible process acha wait just a second all terms involved in in heat exchanged in heat exchanged divided by divided by 
the absolute temperature divided by the absolute temperature in a reversible isothermal process in a reversible isothermal process so here ds is equals to dq reversible by t heat exchange in reversible process so delta s equals to since it is, it is reversible isothermal so temperature outside dq reversible this is the change in entropy here copy this is the mathematical definition of entropy now you see if heat absorbed by the system by the system so what happens temperature increases and entropy also increases it is zero temperature increases entropy also increases if heat is released by the system if heat is evolved once again heat is evolved then what happens temperature of the system decreases and hence entropy change also decreases less than zero so keep that in mind we have two uh, terms here for you know to understand the uh, spontaneity of any process one is enthalpy other one is entropy this one entropy we use to measure the randomness or disorderness of a system right now you see for an spontaneous process in isolated system condition we are applying here okay for an spontaneous process spontaneous process in isolated system right since the system is isolated so there is no exchange
there is no exchange of energy or matter energy or matter between system and surrounding between system and surroundings right hence delta s would be zero in this case but what happens here only suppose system is isolated and gases are mixing suppose we have a system here isolated system right no uh, nothing is there there is no interaction between system and surroundings but this gases particles are there and these gases particles are mixing with each other right they are interacting and mixing with each other with each other so under this process only if you have mixing of gases if we have mixing of gases then delta s total greater than 0 because of gases it is mixing correct so these are some facts we have if the system is not isolated is not isolated then we can write the change in system or uh, entropy of the system total is equals to the change in entropy of uh, you know system plus the change in entropy of surrounding i have written delta h here by mistake just let me correct it delta s total is equals delta s of uh, the system plus delta s of surroundings this is the relation we have here if the system is not isolated next point write down during a spontaneous process write down all of you acha first of all you copy this ha all of you copy this down during a spontaneous process the entropy of the system goes on increasing the entropy of the system goes on increasing till the system attains the equilibrium state till the system attains equilibrium state attains equilibrium state so at equilibrium next line so at equilibrium the entropy of the system is maximum right 
so at equilibrium the entropy of the system is maximum and there is no further increase in entropy right i'm repeating so at equilibrium the entropy of the system is maximum and there is no further increase in entropy should i repeat just a second let me just check this what have we done ha ah, just a second shraddha uh, let me just finish this i'll repeat the entire point again uh, so at equilibrium the entropy of the system is maximum and there is no further increase in entropy okay so i'm repeating from the beginning here during a spontaneous process the entropy of the system goes on increasing till the system attains the equilibrium state till the system attains the equilibrium state so at equilibrium the entropy of the system is maximum and there is no and there is no further increase in entropy right okay so what happens uh, when there is exchange in uh, you know energy between system and surroundings so one of the uh, you know uh, what we can say if the entropy of system is increasing then the entropy of surrounding will decrease so for one the entropy is increasing for the one the entropy is decreasing so you will have an equilibrium state in between somewhere right so if you talk about the system whose entropy is increasing its entropy will be maximum when the equilibrium is achieved right and at equilibrium what we can write the change in entropy is what at equilibrium delta s at equilibrium the change in entropy delta s equals to 0 because this is a maximum value more than this the entropy cannot increase one more factual statement we have here like for non spontaneous process the entropy change is negative this also you must keep in mind now you see we have different different conditions and in different different conditions we'll find out the entropy change so first one we have entropy change in isothermal reversible process isothermal reversible process what i am assuming here i am assuming suppose a system absorbs Q 
क्यू अमाउंट ऑफ हीट क्यू अमाउंट ऑफ हीट फ्रॉम सराउंडिंग्स फ्रॉम सराउंडिंग्स एट टेम्परेचर टी एट टेम्परेचर टी तो सिंस द सिस्टम इज एब्सॉर्बिंग हीट सो इट्स चेंज इन एंट्रॉपी इज पॉजिटिव प्लस क्यू बाई टी राइट दिस इज फॉर सिस्टम राइट डेल्टा एस फॉर सिस्टम इज दिस equal amount of heat is being lose by surroundings so it will be minus q by t right system loses surrounding loses heat and system gains heat so it is minus it is plus what is the total entropy change delta s total is equal to system plus surroundings Plus delta S of surrounding, so this would be equals to zero. So delta S total is zero here. Total entropy change is zero in isothermal reversible process. so this is what we need to keep in mind if it is reversible isothermal process then entropy change is total entropy change is zero then okay now if you have reversible adiabatic process then what happens write down heading reversible adiabatic reversible adiabatic process okay but adiabatic process we can say q is equals to 0 there is no heat exchange when q is equals to 0 delta s of system is what that is also equals to 0 because this is q reversible by t right so this is equals to also 0 delta s of system is 0 delta s of surroundings is also zero delta s total that is system per surroundings equals to zero
So this also you can keep in mind for an reversible adiabatic process. Again, delta S system zero, delta S surrounding zero, total delta S equals to zero. Copy it. Okay. Yes, done, guys. Are you getting it? All of you, respond. Yes, anyone there? What happened? Are you sleeping? Okay. Now you see the next third condition what we have. The entropy change in reversible process, in irreversible, I'm sorry, in irreversible process. irreversible process. See, I'm assuming system is at temperature T1 and surroundings is at temperature T2. See guys, one thing you must understand here, we are just trying to understand the entropy change in different, different conditions. And one of these conditions you will get in the question in the test. Right, so what are the conditions we have? All those conditions we need to understand. And based on conditions, how we can apply, you know, in this concept of entropy, that is what we are doing here. So I'm assuming irreversible process, both system and surroundings, at different, different temperature T1 and T2. What I'm assuming next, I am assuming T1 is greater than T2. You can also assume T2 greater than T1, any one you can assume. You'll get the same answer. Whatever you'll assume, you'll get the same answer. This is also our assumption we have. I'm assuming system is at more temperature than surroundings. So obviously what happens, which one will lose heat here? Which one will lose heat? System loses heat to the surroundings, right? Minus Q to the surrounding because system is at higher temperature, correct? Q amount of heat is released by the system. So can we write delta S of system equals to minus Q by the temperature of system that is T1, is it correct? Similarly, delta S of surroundings would be what? Surroundings receives heat Q amount by T2. And what is the total entropy change? Delta S total. That would be equals to this plus this plus Q by T2 minus Q by T1. And then we'll write Q T1 minus T2 by T1, T2. Okay. Now you see what is, we have this condition, right? T1 greater than T2. So what we can write T1 minus T2 is greater than zero from this condition. This means this term is greater than zero. So delta S total is also greater than zero. Means if you have an irreversible process, a total entropy change 
always increases. That is what the conclusion we have. Clear? Done? Okay, done. Can you move on? Tell me. Yeah. Now, heading right down, calculation of change in entropy. Basically, we are going to have some formula of entropy and that is what you, know, you have to memorize and you will get questions based on this formula only. Write down calculation of Calculation of change in entropy. That is delta S. Okay. How do we do this, you see? We know the definition of entropy change it is delta S is equals to D Q reversible by T. Okay. So if you calculate D Q from this D Q reversible is equals to T D S Okay. D Q is equals to T D S. Now, from FLOT float, from FLOT, what we can write DQ is equals to DU plus DW. DQ is TDS is equals to DU is NCVDT and DW is PDV. Okay. DS is equals to NCV DT by T plus we can write P is NR T by V into DV into T. Right? Any doubt in this guys tell me. So DS is equals to NCV dt by t plus nr dv by v. Tell me any doubt here. Till here any doubt. Clear? 
clear now we can integrate it very simple we can integrate it and we'll get the change in entropy for this right so what formula we get here you see the formula we get here is delta s is equals to n c v ln T two by T one plus N R L N V two by V one. This is the formula we have for entropy change if temperature and volume are variable. any doubt in this if temperature and volume are variable then you can use this formula i'll write down here yes yes sign you will get on your own we always use sign convention in the data which is given for the term which we need to find out we won't put sign from our own side right whatever answer comes it will come with the sign which is required positive negative okay so this formula of entropy change will use for when temperature and pressure are variables okay now you see one more thing here you can directly v2 by v1 you can substitute in terms of pressure and temperature so the another formula that you get here is delta s is equals to n c p ln t2 by t1 plus n r ln p1 by p2 this is the another formula we have which we can easily derive from the given one right and this formula we use when temperature and pressure is the variable so this two formula you need to memorize then rest all conditions you can apply in this formula to find out the entropy change formula over here tell me how many of you understood this two formula how did we get this first one to be derived how did we get the second one yes right so what we need to do here we can write down i'll just write down in short over here we can write down p1 v1 by t1 is equals to p2 v2 by t2 so v2 by v1 from this you substitute here in terms of pressure and temperature then you use log formula you'll get cv plus r over here which becomes cp over here acha it should be a volume yeah so mistake it should be volume here when temperature and volume are variable correct yes all of you understood this now if you know this formula you can derive other formula easily now suppose we have the condition for isothermal process for isothermal process so isothermal process what we can write t1 is equals to t2 there is no change in temperature so this becomes ln1 this becomes ln1 which is zero so this term and this term you have to ignore 
you have to eliminate remove so the formula of delta s would be in this formula if you remove this it becomes n r ln v2 by v1 in terms of volume is equals to n r ln what we can write p1 by p2 tell me any confusion in this you'll get direct question on this all the data will be given just need to substitute and get the answer any doubt here okay now for isobaric process what we can do look at the first expression correct look at the first expression delta s is equals to n c v ln t2 by t1 right and pressure is constant here so we can write v1 by t1 is equals to v2 by t2 for isobaric process so what is t2 by t1 t2 by t1 is nothing but v2 by v1 so another expression is equals to n c v ln v2 by v1 this is the formula is it clear any doubt in this in the first expression we remove the volume term we get this and temperature we convert into volume since the pressure is constant by this expression so how many formula we have done we have done here 1 2 isothermal isobaric if it is isochoric then what happens volume constant so first term Oh, just a second. Oh, we have isobaric. No, isobaric is constant, so this is zero. Okay, N C P L N T two by T one. Acha. Okay, I think I have done a mistake over N C P L N T two by T one. isobaric pressure is constant so this term will be zero by mistake i have taken the first term this won't be there this expression will be there so ncp ln t2 by t1 delta s equals to ncp ln t2 by t1 and t2 by t1 we can write this as v2 by v1 so ncp ln v2 by v1 this is the expression we have if the process is isochoric then this volume term would not be there this volume term won't be there so it is ncv ln t2 by t1 ncv ln t2 by t1 so delta s equals to ncv ln t2 by t1 and this t2 by t1 we can apply in terms of pressure volume is constant so pressure and temperature directly proportional so ncv ln p2 by p1 this is the formula 
just we are substituting nothing much with the help of gas law tell me it's fine Copied. Yeah. Now you see the next condition we have mixing of ideal gases. Suppose A and B, two gases are mixing. You can have more than two also. I'm assuming two over here. So delta S of the mixture is equals to minus 2.303 R N A log of X A plus N B log of X B where Na is the number of moles of A, Xa is the mole fraction of A. So N is simply, I'll write down number of moles. X is the mole fraction. Correct? If you have C, another guess also, we'll write down Nc plus log Xc and so on we'll go. The last three formula we have here, important one on this, they have asked question also in JE. When there is a phase change, so entropy change during phase change. So Delta S of fusion. What is fusion? Fusion is the process in which solid converts to liquid. Correct? Solid to liquid. Then whatever energy involved in this process, delta H of fusion, divided by the temperature at which the fusion is taking place. Right? That is a fusion temperature. Right? Similarly, delta S of vaporization, liquid to vapor, Again, same formula, delta H involved in the process of vaporization divided by the temperature, which is the boiling point of the liquid because vaporization takes place at boiling point in general. Delta S of sublimation. What is sublimation? It is solid to vapor. So whatever, again, the enthalpy exchange in this process divided by the temperature at which the sublimation is taking place, right? So this is the three formula we have during phase change. The first one on this, the question has been asked in JE. All the data will be given. You just need to substitute and get the answer. Copy this down.
dan ya yeah. so on these basics you know a change in entropy formula you will get uh numericals okay that you need to solve we'll see some questions here try this Yeah, did you get the answer? Tell me. Nineteen point four you are getting. That's close. It's right. Okay, approximately twenty. Yeah. So basically, this question, this kind of question, just to write down the data given and use the formula of entropy. Right. So you see, in this question, entropy change is given, temperature change is given, and volume change is given. It means delta S formula. You need to write down in in terms of temperature and volume. That is N C V, L N of T two by T one. Plus N R L N V two by V one. If you get confused, you just you have to do this. Suppose formula you forgot in the exam. What you need to do, you see. You know, first law of thermodynamics: dQ is equals to dU plus 
dw right this from here you can get anything dq is tds n cv dt is du it is pdv is dw just you divide this by t n cv dt by t p is nrt by v so it is nr dv by v now then then you have to integrate this you will understand that what would be here either it is t1 by t2 or t2 by t1 you will understand it okay there's two steps you need to do yeah so that's let me just remove this not required basic you understand from where which expression we derive this particular formula there's two steps you need to write and it is done so ncv it is 3 mole cv is 12.5 take care of units in this kind of questions for temperature you don't have to bother because it is the ratio so it is 320 by 300 320 by 300 plus 3 into r is 8.314 don't take it in 0.0821 into ln v2 by v1 is or 10 by 5 just you need to solve this approximately the answer you would get 19.71 joule per kelvin without calculator it's a bit difficult to solve ln value see you can do two three things if there is complex expression the values of anti log will be given in the question so that value you have to use anti log value will be given if not then you should know the value of these three things that's a log 2 value you should know 0.30 log 3 is 0.48 approximately and log 5 is 0.70 approximately so with these three values if you know you can do some you can use some mathematical tools some mathematical formula and you can find out the answer the expression you will get in such a way the data will be given in the question in such a way so that you can calculate with the help of these three values if not then the value would be given in the question itself yeah understood so sometimes what happens here you see what is you need to take care over here because you will get this kind of questions i don't want to you know just give you the formula substitute and calculate and give, tell me the answer you can do it on your own after the class what is the key point that you need to understand over here that sometimes what happens here they will give kilo joule okay so r value you are taking in joule here you see it is joule per mole kelvin so either you convert this joule into kilo joule here or this kilo joule into joule you need to convert so this kind of you know uh, alertness you must have while solving this kind of questions because there only you can make some mistakes if you do not take care of units correct understood okay see one more thing you must understand over here sometimes they won't ask you to find out the absolute value like this 
okay but in the options expression will be given in entropy like suppose this obviously you can substitute in terms of cp right cp minus cv is equals to r so cv you can substitute in terms of cp and then you can multiply and take this nr common because what happens cv is equals to what we can write we have cp minus cv is equals to r so cv is equals to r cp minus r so if the expression is given in terms of cp then this cv here you can substitute as cp minus r so this would be cp minus r over here then you multiply from n ln t2 by t1 to this term and then you see this nr this nr you can take common and there you will get a different kind of expression probably in terms of pressure you may get okay so that also you can do or they can give you the expression that way in the option so you can do that once you know the relation got it clear understood okay fine so we have done with this okay uh next we need to start with second law of thermodynamics okay so this part probably will uh, finish today second law of thermodynamics we need to start that will do after the break okay so we'll take a break now we'll resume at 6:30 take a break guys <laughs>